I don't know why, but uh, the very first time that I came out to Little River, and I didn't know Tim, I didn't know anything about Lighthouse Digest or anything at that time, but um, I had read his article in preparation to come to Little River to stay the night, and something about those sailors uh, touched my heart. And I brought flowers, the flowers that are on the graves there. I came the very first time and put the flowers on their graves. And um, we had talked about doing a plaque for them for the last two and a half years, and it's really wonderful that today that is now a reality, that we're actually doing the plaque dedication today. It's great. Um, I'd like to read some history to you about the sailors and about the ship. During the late 1800s, there was a particularly large lumber industry in the Calais area, with many sawmills built on both sides of the St. Croix River. Vessels were needed to transport the lumber to other locations, and the Rideout and Lord shipyard in Calais was established in 1870 in order to meet this need. 23 boats were built over the next 20 years. One of the sawmills along the river was owned by James Murchie and Sons. They formed a partnership with Homer Skinner, a lumber merchant in Fall River, Massachusetts, and along with over 20 other investors, they contracted for the Julia A. War to be built in 1890 so she could bring the lumber from Calais to the Massachusetts area. The Julia was the last ship to be built at the shipyard and was known for being, quote, one of the staunchest vessels that ever sailed from this port. On either Thursday or Friday, December 16th or 17th in 1897, the war set sail for Vineyard Haven on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts with a full cargo of lumber, laths, and shingles. Within the next 48 hours, a huge storm struck the New England coast that lasted at least two days, moving from New York into Canada. It somehow is very fitting that we would be here today under almost the same circumstances of a hurricane that's supposed to last for a couple of days. Perhaps it was a hurricane back then in 1897. I looked on the web, couldn't find any information about that, but they said that it was very spotty. Records were kept back then. So we don't really know if it was a hurricane, but it did reach all the way from New York up to this area. The Calus Times reported the known damage from the storm five days later. It read, at Seal Cove, Grand Manan, Sunday, the schooner Sarah went ashore during the gale and became a total wreck. The crew landed at Campo Bello. She was laden with flour and corn consigned to Eastern or Eastport merchants. There was anxiety for Lubeck lifesavers who went to the vessel's rescue, but they returned all safe. The same day, the schooner Terrapin, bound for this port, lost her sails off Long Island. So you can see the storm was far reaching. But after bending new sails, proceeded in safety. The Calais schooner, Louise Boardman, which had sails blown away and boom broken Saturday in the bay, was assisted and towed into the port by the tug Spring Hill. Numerous other marine disasters in the gale are reported, and in the list is included the St. John's schooner, L.T. Whitmore, which struck and went to pieces near Fisher's Island while bound from St. John's to New York with a cargo of deals. The crew escaped in a boat. A dispatch from Salem, Massachusetts says the St. John's schooner Marguerite, loaded with loss, was burned to the water's edge. That makes at least five other schooners that were crippled or wrecked in the course of this storm, although all the crews were reported as being safe. The Julia was supposed to reach Vineyard Haven by Christmas, but she never made it. An article in the Callis Weekly newspaper shortly after the New Year stated that the anxiety for the schooner Julia A. War intensified Tuesday when James Murchie and Sons received a dispatch from the managing owner of the vessel, Homer Skinner, in Fall River, which read as follows. Fishermen reported white centerboard schooner bottom up, 200 miles off of Cape Cod, spruce lumber and shingles floating alongside. By photograph and description, he is almost confident that it is the Julia A. War, capsized and all is lost. This is terrible news. Relatives and friends of the crew have not abandoned hope, and the final report may bring better news. But the headline on January 6th was more discouraging, saying, all hope for schooner Julia War abandoned. The article added, it is thought that she capsized during one of the gales three weeks ago. Friends and relatives of the schooner have given up all hope of ever seeing them again. On January 13th, it was reported that the Washington authorities, on information from Congressman Simpkins in Massachusetts, ordered the revenue cutner, cu cutter Manning to search for the wreck, which was seen which was last seen 170 miles off of Cape Cod. But a few days later, it was reported that the cutter returned to Boston from an unsuccessful cruise in the search for the derelict. Back in Calais, there was still brewing a glimmer of hope. The friends of the captain and crew of the Julia War of this port still retain hopes that they were taken off and will be heard from on arrival at some foreign land. So they were thinking maybe a boat picked them up and went over to Europe. 
But as the silence continued, the hope flickered out. At the end of January, the cutter Manning was sent out one more time to look for the schooner, but again failed to sight her and returned in February with no news. Finally, on March 29th, the Boston Globe reported <coughs> that the mystery sounding the disappearance of the schooner Julia War has at last been solved, the shell of the vessel having drifted ashore near Meacox Life Saving Station on Fire Island this morning. The vessel undoubtedly capsized during one of the heaviest gales in December, and her crew undoubtedly perished. The schooner left Callas in December for Vineyard Haven and was never afterwards heard, although a wreck heard from, although a wreck passed several times in the vicinity of the South Shoal light ship, light ship bottom up and was supposed to have been the missing vessel. In April, the hull and remaining cargo of the Julia A. War, once valued at over $7,000, was sold for $225 at the place where she grounded on Long Island. During the last fateful trip, Captain George D. War of Callas was in command of the vessel. He was known as one of the most successful masters in the coasting trade. At age 44, he left behind his wife Ida and six children. Seaman Willis War, age 26, was Captain War's nephew. He left behind his wife Maud and two very young sons. Seaman Camel Bacay, age 44, had divorced his wife Lizzie six years earlier. It is unknown if he remarried, but he left two teenage daughters behind in Callas. The cook, Hartley Arthur Moses, also age 26, left his wife May and his little nine-month-old daughter Jenny to mourn his loss. But most tragic of all was Leon Fred Wilson in his mid-twenties who had served on the war as a mate for over two years. Leon was Captain War's brother-in-law, having married the half-sister of the captain's wife. Leon and Florence had married only the week before mm -hmm. the fateful trip took place. Captain War had sold a cottage to Leon, who was from Jonesport, to be able to set up his honeymoon home. How sad it was that he was never able to do so. While all three of the young wives <coughs> eventually remarried after their husband's deaths, Florence did not do so until 12 years later. Surely this must have been an extremely traumatic event for her to overcome. While we may not know exactly which two of these five men is buried on Little River Island, we honor all of their memories today in dedicating this plaque. For 120 years, they have been referred to as the unknown sailors on Little River Island. But now we can restore their names and tell their stories so that all who come here in the future may know who they are and remember the story of the Julia A. War.